Hi, this is Rachel, and this is topic 34 in our supervision curriculum, and today's topic is about literature review. Now, this could be a um, great in-depth conversation, especially for trainees that are going to be in roles where they might be conducting literature reviews on a frequent basis. Um, I use this as, again, sort of an introductory topic, and then we can go into more detail with individuals in their individual supervision, um, or we can focus on maybe specific things or spend more time on this if we need to. But basically what we talk about is at this point um, in their supervision and in their coursework, they are uh, trainees have encountered a lot of articles. They've had to read a lot of articles. Um, they've read a lot of stuff in their courses. But we really want to talk about how do you go out and find literature on your own on a specific topic? Say you want to intervene on a particular behavior or you want to use a particular intervention and you want to find out what the literature says about that. So there's a few things that we discuss. Um, I have links there for journal articles and where people might be able to find some. That is not the only place that journals exist, um, but those are some that uh, most students are going to have easy access to. Um, universities are sometimes uh, able to provide more access. Um, so definitely capitalize upon the resources that you have. Um, but we talk about when you are looking for journal articles, kind of what sort of search terms you might use and what you might, uh, once you find an article that's on the right topic, like how you might then use their sources to go back and look for stuff. Or um, some of the databases have like, you find an article and then it says cited by, and so therefore who moving forward cited this particular research. So we talk about those aspects. We also talk about um, when you are reading the articles, like where do you start? Like if you're trying to see if this is what you're looking for, how much of it do you read? Um, I was taught somewhere in grad school to, um, you know, when you're first looking for an article, read the title, um, read the abstract. If the abstract looks like it's on the right page, um, looking for what you're, you know, talking about what you're looking for, then jump down to the results and conclusions to see if what they're describing in the abstract is still meeting. You, you want a little bit more detail, but you sort of just jump to the end to see if the results actually came out talking about what you are, what questions you are trying to answer. If they did, then you go back up to um, like the, the methods section and okay, how did they get to these results? And then if all of that still is exactly what you're looking for, then you go back and you read the introduction. So that way, what you can do is you can sort of eliminate as you're trying to find research, um, you can eliminate research that isn't quite what you're looking for. If you start with the introduction, it doesn't necessarily get to the point very quickly about what it is they did and how that came out. They mention that stuff in the abstract, but the abstract is, you know, confined to a certain number of words. So you have to um, kind of jump around, skip to the end to see if it's a good ending, see if it's what you're looking for, and then go back and get some of that additional information. So that's what I suggest to trainees when they start looking for articles on particular topics. Now, what I have done in the past here is have the trainee pick a topic, um, ideally related to something that they are currently researching or um, a learner that they're supporting or perhaps you know a future project that they're thinking they might want to get involved in and and pick a topic related to something of their interest something that's going to benefit them so if they're having trouble coming up with a topic I can help them narrow it down um, but basically they they 
get a topic, we agree on the topic. I ask them to locate two or three articles related to that topic that could be presented as maybe supplemental reading to that topic if they were going to teach about it. So for example, in some of our previous lessons, if they were going to be presenting research on a certain group contingency, then I would want them to find two or three articles related to the specific group contingency where they used that group contingency or they discussed or they compared that group contingency. So that's what I would ask them to present, right? To, to find those articles. Um, submit the articles. So they, they have to actually get the articles and, and send me a copy of it a picture of it, something like that, so that I know that they actually had the whole article and didn't just read some abstract, right? Um, and write a one page summary for each article, summarizing the, the article and how it relates to the topic. So not just a summary where they say, in this they did this, and in here they did this, but also describing why they selected that as an example of their topic or how this relates to their topic. So again, if I'm talking group contingencies, you know, this is a great, this article shows a good example of how you could do an interdependent group contingency in a classroom. This article shows the, uh, compares an interdependent group contingency to an independent group contingency and how that affected work completion in a classroom or satisfaction of the students in a classroom, right? And just explaining that component as well. So for the assignment, you know, we, we talk about sort of where you find the literature and how you might uh, scan some articles to determine which ones are close to your topic. Um, I also talk about resources that I use for finding articles. And one that I really like is uh, the partnership. So the partnership, their website is baresearchcitations.com. And one of the things that I really like is that they have this current contents in ABA. And what they do, it's a subscription, and they send an email every month with a spreadsheet and a summary of all the articles that were published the previous month month um, of the journals that they search in behavior analysis. Um, so, and if they have a free full text version available, it contains the link. So instead of having to go out and search journals all the time, or um, maintain a lot of journal subscriptions because I, I can't afford to maintain a lot of journal subscriptions. Um, I can get this delivered to my email um, and it's the partnership and uh, their website is baresearchcitations.com and it's fantastic. So I share this information with uh, trainees as well and encourage them to subscribe to this or find something similar so that they also can um, stay current on literature in a, an easier way. So thank you for joining us. This is the next to last topic. Topic 35 is the last topic in our supervision curriculum. So please join us next time as we wrap up our supervision curriculum. And if you have any questions or comments or feedback, please feel free to leave that in the comments below. Thank you.